Thank you for tuning in to Kenji Sheck's Conquest, Episode 7, Industrial Investments. The thing I need to do next is to add some torches on the interaction spots for copper and iron and the processing, uh, because we're going to need those coming up. Where are you going, dude? Mine here. Rain haul to the copper. There we go. Oh, she is hauling to the other box. Okay, you know what? Fine. Both of you switch nodes. That is fine. This one's closer anyway. So here is the iron plate processing. McNower is going to be the one responsible for moving the plates to the plate storage. And then we can use this plate storage to try, try to build up our supply. Uh, I'm going to add a little bit more to our basic industry setup. I'm going to make sure that we have a source of building materials. And then once I do, I'm going to open up the viewer submitted ideas for what to work on thereafter. I am not entirely sure where she's going, but I'm eager to find out. So we'll see where she hauls to. <laughs> okay, yep. Yeah. She's off. Might need to tinker with the uh the sound volume again. It's it's really unfortunate that the game is has doesn't have like normalized volumes. Oh, uh, you know, I see what it is. There was some copper left as a resource here that they were grabbing. That makes sense. Yep, that makes perfect sense. Azola, thanks for the gifted sub. And a lot of bits actually coming in. So Quirazilla, Shona, Petrable, and Morton. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. All right, so there we go. Now we have copper. And the copper, for now, is sort of our income. And then the iron is going into iron plates for building materials. Rockvin is researching, and I think what I'm going to do is peel Kang off of this group here. Get him to stop doing his job of mining the iron. Uh, go feed Rain and Poetic, and then help scout a place to do stone mining. So stone mining is the last big industry that I, I feel like I need. All right, so Poetic and Rain just got fed. Mako, thanks for the bits as well. So King's coming up here, and he is going to grab some of the building materials. I'm going to need a whole bunch of building materials. But uh, the first stash of building materials that I'm going to grab is going to be to add torches. Because, as you can see, the sun is low in the sky. And pretty soon it's going to be dark. And if we don't have a light source, uh, we are penalized for speed. Our, our skill literally drops. Which is just the way the Kenshi works. If Squint is uninhabitable for all of them, Shona, um, what you could try to Google is something called an import. Sometimes towns bug out, and if they do, you can import your save into a new world, and it uh, it often fixes uh, those those issues. I can't say for sure it's gonna fix your issues, but uh, that's generally how to fix issues. We have a lot of drifters walking around here. So, let me update my current goal. Uh, invest in more industries. I'm going to be done with the industries very shortly. Uh, it won't take me very long to get a stone mine and stone processor, especially now that I'm making my own um, iron plates. Alright, so in terms of lights, I'll add torch posts here, here, here. I'm going to keep it well illuminated. Oh, I guess McNower had building materials on him. That makes that easy. And then Kang will add the other torches. And this is so that they, they don't work in the dark at penalty. Another thing to note, because I got a YouTube comment about this. You can have electrical lights, but one of the interesting things about electrical lights is... 
they will go on and off depending on the time of day, but they're not perfect. So actually what ends up happening is if you rely on electri electrical lights, right around dusk and dawn, you'll actually be in the dark with darkness penalties. So odd enough, um, you often, even late game, are going to want uh, torches maybe as well as electrical lights, but you're definitely going to want torches. You can't do without torches. Coffee to games. Oh, I love that name. And Balefire, thank you for the follows and coffee for the sub. I burned my mouth on uh, some, some bread a few days ago, so... Drinking coffee is a wee bit painful. Just a wee bit. So we're almost done with the small house research, and then we will be able to get the tier two research bench. That is the next thing that we're researching, and I'm excited about that because the tier two research bench um, is sort of the form factor that you will permanently need. Oh, look at you. Hungry little bandits. And that is why I'm in the hub. All right, so small house is now done. So, with Small House Researched, uh, we can now make shacks. Obviously, we can't do it within the um, the vicinity of, of the hub. But we can make shacks, and we can make storm houses. Storm houses are um, relatively inexpensive, only costing 16 building materials, which is very, in very, very inexpensive. If only I could build houses that cheaply in real life. Oh. Count me in. Materials Trader is on the way to my outpost. Oh, interesting. Um, I'm going to call it Mining Outpost. So, traders being on their way to your outposts is very random. Uh, you can also attract raids as well. And, you know, sometimes they show up. Uh, as you can see, if I go to Faction... Uh, materials trader from the Western Hive is coming to the Rockfin Mining Outpost. Is the way to read that. Backpacks may be a good idea. Yep, if I had the money. I don't currently have the money. But I'm planning on it. Actually, we'll be voting on it. Okay, torch for you. That will speed up their mining. And now, uh, Kang is going to try to find a place for stone mining. So to do that, I just prospect and go to stone. There's a tiny node of stone here, maybe, that I could mine for. So uh, go to mining, go to stone mine, and then check the efficiency which is going to be the yield. So I could put a stone mine here at about 75%, which honestly is fine. Or I could try to find a nicer place. So uh, maybe I'll ask you, should I settle for 75%? It's it's probably not a big deal, but I, you know I could get it up to 100. So there you are. I'll put a little timer on that pole. And then... I'm going to add one more light here, which is, I think, where the interaction point for mining this copper will actually be. And then, once you guys decide on whether or not I'm going to settle, uh, having that materials trader coming in is actually really, really nice, because that's going to allow me to invest in the stone mine and um, to build up the stone mine pretty quickly. Feels Gamer and Argus IA. Thank you for the subs. Cheers. You've made the Yoda very happy. Remains not homeless for one more day. <laughs> I'm just teasing. Alright, so there we go. We have that all squared away. Uh, Kang is now going to run around collecting some copper uh, for sale so that I might be able to forward materials. And then on top of that, if we check the map here, we can actually physically see, I believe this is the materials trader coming from the Western Hive. So it probably started here in the Hive Village 
and it follows the roads. And if you see, I have updated my mod list to include one more mod that just shows me the roads. It shows me the zones and the roads. So the red are roads and the black are um, zone edge locations. Where'd Kane go? Oh, yeah. Grab that copper. All right, now Kang is here. Let me just drop more food off to uh, rain and poetic for more copper space. All right, Kang is, is temporarily... It's funny because he's probably one of the most combat-oriented of the group, and now he is my traitor. And you guys say, settle. I can, I can dig that. So, go ahead and hide that pole. Settle for 75%. Just to make it clear, uh, all of the industries that I'm investing in right now is just so that I can build up the wealth to be able to build a base later on. I can um, continue. Oh, there we go. Tech level two. Done. Uh, let's see what new research I have available to me. So I could do makeshift walls. Some of these um, need a bench level two, as you can see. So you can see all of the tech that will soon be available to me once I have a bench level two. Um, but I'm going to do improved stone mining as a research now because I, I sort of know that I'm going to want it. And I'm also going to do uh, the basic clothing types with the last book that I have. McNauer, no, you didn't miss much. I put you in charge of hauling iron plates. All right, so King's heading into the bar just to sell some copper. And then... The next thing I wanted to pull you all about, let me bring this up, is my priority. So we have invested in industry, which is for me to continually invest in the base and industry, possibly making my own clothing or making my own armor or weapons, something like that. We could go recruiting. Um, keep it in mind that, of course, there's a very finite number of Shek that are even out there able to be recruited, so that might not be fruitful. We'll have to see. Um, and then... We've got uh, Train for Combat, which means uh, building the training dummies and, or beating up um, beating up uh, dust bandits and the like. Uh, we also have Strength Training and Athletics, which would be buying a trade backpack, filling it up with ore, picking each other up, running around, that kind of thing. That would be for Strength. For Athletics, it would just be going on patrol or traveling a long distance, probably as a group for safety in numbers. Uh, get a new arm for Rackvin. That's pretty straightforward. We'd need to build up a sizable uh, investment, a sizable fund for a new arm or invest in equipment, uh, trying to buy backpacks or weapons or whatever. Yeah, the the better industry is a really good way to just sort of improve everything overall eventually. So here we go. Mining the stone mine. Actually, you know what? I'm going to wait until I get a stone mine level two. I'm not going to do the stone mining just yet. But what I can do, knowing that the Yeah, I'll just I'll just have Kane go back to um iron mining until I have that uh improved stone mining researched. Might as well not jump the gun there. Jackie Jackie Jack. Thank you for the resub. Cheers. So we have eight iron plates, which is going to easily be enough for uh, the stone processor that we're going to need. And then eh, we're, we're building up some funds. We have about 2.7k. It's not bad. Another thing I might want to do is to just travel around to make sure no one's starving. So let me check on that. Uh, Trapper Keeper is getting hungry. Oh boy. And you are skinny. There's not much left of you. I better get some food in you. And there we go. Here are the uh, the Hiver material traders. The caravan boss. Uh, Ruka, I'm going to have you head over. And chat them up. Actually, uh, I'm going to have you head over once you grab the copper. Option six is covered by the goals. Yeah. Um, there. There. It's not going to be directly above my head, but it will be close enough. And then let me do that for 
here as well. That should be uh, a little bit, a little bit better for you. You have to move it multiple times because there's multiple scenes. All right, stone mining is almost done, and Ruka is going to go see. Why are you ignoring us? I'm not ignoring you. I'm coming. Just just hold your horses. Are they leaving already? No, don't leave. Okay. Yep, they're gone. <laughs> I took one too many seconds, and they just busted out of there. All right, so we have improved stone mining, which uh, gives us more stone mining yield, or like quicker. So here we go. The stone mine level two. And you can tab here. See these arrows? You can tab between them. So one costs uh, three building materials, one costs five building materials, and the better it is, the faster it will produce the material that you have it set up for. So I think 75, 76% might be the best I can get. So there it is. We need uh, five building materials for that. Kang has three of five, so he's going to go deliver that. And then Ruka is going to run into town uh, delivering... The six copper and buying two more building materials for the remaining needed mine. Yeah, they they didn't they don't stick around very long. They never do. So what ends up happening? The nicer the stone node and the nicer the stone mine is increased efficiency. James Cry Havoc, thanks for the follow as well. Jack and James. All right, Ruka's putting the hustle on. And then Ruka should also probably buy some food for Trapper Keeper and others. McNower is also pretty hungry. I can't believe there's so many people just like wandering around out here. It seems almost bugged. Why is there a pacifier wandering around outside of town? I have no idea. I, You don't tend to see that. I could always do an import if need be. I'll have to keep an eye on that. I want to do a quick little primer about food. So food has a different nutrition unit amount. And as you can see, some of the food here has like white bars indicating that you can have multiple meals out of the food. They also have different values. So rice is 25 nutrition for 167 cats. And this has double the nutrition for, um, you know, almost, what, four times the cats? So you gotta sort of keep an eye on what is a good deal. Um, so, like, Gohan is a pretty good deal at 320 cats for 75 nutrition, and that will keep you fed for a while. Uh, so, Ruka is gonna buy that and the two building materials. Uh, eventually, we'll be farming. Oh, she just ate. Yeah, so there, there's an indicator where she ate... Uh, 50 nutrition out of the Gohan, but not all of it, leaving some left. So some food doesn't have bars like that, like uh, the raw meat, the um, the small meat and stuff like that, but some do. So you, you should keep an eye on um, that sort of stuff. Now, once you're really wealthy, which is pretty easy to accomplish in Kenji, it doesn't matter all that much because it's like oh well I have enough money to throw at uh, I have enough money to throw at uh, whatever food source I want and Stevie thanks for the resub as well so the stone mine's almost built and then I will do the stone processor and then I'm gonna have to split my people to you know, because I only have a finite amount of manpower or shek power. And decide who works where. Oh, so here's here's a... Um, we're next to a torch, and we're still in darkness. Oh, great. The lovely tribulations of illumination. So, mining, stone processor, 
And this stone processor is just about identical to the metal processor. Um, and then we're also going to want uh, storage. So this will be storage for stones and building materials. And of course, I'm going to need torches as well. Up here, uh, one thing I should start to set up is the research bench tier two. As you can see, it is a totally separate bench, much, much larger than the original one. And I'm gonna set it up right in this nook. Prominently featured. Because Rockfin's almost done with the small research bench and everything that you can do with the small research bench, you can do with the bigger one. So, you know, there's uh, there's really no harm in doing that. All right, so Kang, you are now, I have no idea if, if, let me check who's a good engineer. Eight. Yeah, honestly, Kang is the best engineer anyway. So Kang, you're going to uh, continue to engineer. So one way to do this automatically is to hold left shift, right click on the task and then drag the task. As you can see at the bottom right here, drag the task up. So he engineers before he mines iron. And that way he automatically grabs iron plates from the plate storage and then starts to work um, to set up the stone processor. Totally automated. And that way if you're making, if, you know, if you're trying to set up to make a whole bunch of walls, for instance, uh, you don't have to individually select which walls you're building. You can just batch them by telling your engineer, hey, go build. And they will build within a huge radius. They're pretty good about that. Can you make anything else from stone? No, it's basically just, uh, it's just building materials. So now I'm moving Rooka over from uh, iron to stone. And then Trapper Keeper is going to start mining iron. So we have two mining iron and two processing iron. And we're going to start with stone. And I'm actually probably going to move a lot more people over to building materials as that tends to be more necessary for additional construction. Uh, but the iron plates are necessary for the tech bench. I need 10 of them. So as soon as Rockfin's done, which should be in seconds, with simple clothing types, I'll have him grab some of the iron from the iron storage and uh, get that going. All right, taking a look at the poll here, invest in industry is going to be what would do. So here we are, clothing types is done. And this research bench I'm just gonna break down. It yields a building material, which I can, I'm just gonna drop here because knowing I'm gonna need to put a torch in later. Get rid of the old torch. Again, another building material. And then we need 10 iron plates. Is it theoretically possible to build walls around other cities? Um, yes, ish. I only say ish because cities have like a, I'll, I'll show you real quick. Cities have like a sort of a no build zone. See the blue here? This indicates that you're too close to another town to build. So you could build walls outside of that zone, uh, but it would, it would be quite an investment project. And, and wouldn't make all that much sense. Um, also, walls are a little weird to use in Kenshi. They don't line up nicely. So it's you often will have like an odd break in the wall. And uh, that might be frustrating if you try to do that. Also, if you're wondering when I'm blocking here, it's just like, it's nothing. It's I can always move my camera, but it's, it's not important information that I'm missing. Or that you're missing, I should say. Okay, grabbing some iron plates to start the Tech 2 setup. And I guess I'm going to pause construction on the dummies because we didn't really vote for that. The training dummy Mark 1 will have to wait. So the stone processor is built. 
And then Kang should automatically start working on the storage boxes. So here where we process the stone into building materials. Kind of like cement mixing, I guess. Yeah, if you open up the debug menu, you can show the radius of the cities. Um, they're very large. Okay. So there is the start of that research bench. And down here... I'm getting more iron. Actually, Trapper Keeper, I'm going to switch you. I'm getting more iron than I am uh, iron plates. So I'm going to try to work through the backlog of iron plates. And here is the building material storage. And then King has the last iron required for the storage for stones. Hey, Camel Spider, do you know why, like, the pacifier and all these people are just wandering around out here? Are they bugged, or do they sometimes do that? I don't really recall them ever doing that. Yeah, I've got some skinny shacks. Yeah, they need to bulk up. They need to eat, and they need a strength gain. Alright, how's Rock been faring? He's working it. He's working it. Alright, so I think Kang is now done. And then Ruka here, I'm going to have her haul the stones to storage. As an automated task. And then we can see where she uh, prefers to stand when it comes to uh, mining. And I'll put a torch post there. It may have to do with uh, people visiting my outpost. Yeah, it might, but uh, the bar thug and the pacifiers don't ever visit you. Drifters would. Drifters and tech hunters would normally, but like not the the types of people that are visiting me right now don't make any sense because it's people that would never travel. To accidentally build on the road? Uh, yeah, I might have built close to the road. Here is the road. So, I just put down the stone mine, but its I don't think it's physically blocking the road. But whatever. Uh, once, once I'm out of here, it won't really matter. When I pull up stakes and, and, and uh, settle somewhere permanent. Alright. So, the research bench... Seven more. It's, it's funny. Seven more building materials needed to complete this construction. False. Seven more plates. That is a bug. All right, for now, I think I'm going to have Kang stop mining and start processing the stone. So we'll see where he automatically wants to stand. And then we'll put a torch there. So now he is turning this raw stone into building materials, and Rooka's turning stone into, well, raw stone. So, yeah, we have the full tech chains. Uh, Rockfin here is uh, royally pissing me off, trying to haul things needlessly. So I, I'm just going to give him the, the job of engineer, so he stops trying to do that. And uh, let me speed up the timer a little bit, so we can get this research bench underway. And then continue to sell copper for research books to unlock further industries. Because you guys told me to invest in my industry. And I'm going to do just that. No, dude, 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 stop. <laughs> like fighting with him. He keeps trying to like reset his uh, priorities. Okay, pick up the building material. So now he's going to set up those torches for the building material processing. Oh, Ruka changed where she naturally stands. Uh, I guess what I'll do is dismantle this torch post and put the new one in. What's the next step of industry? 
The next step of industry is honestly uh, improving the efficiency of the stone processor and the iron mine. And then trying to get tech level 3 to be able to process... Uh, to, be, to be able to process the copper would be really good too. Because um, copper can be processed into electrical components and they sell pretty well. They, uh, they fetch a, a pretty nice price. Another thing I'm going to do is to hand out some of these uh, med kits just so that everybody has one and uh, my inventory is not so overwhelmed full of random stuff. So all of these four now have a random med kit. Come on. There we go. So, yeah. Our, our, uh, the way we're making money right now is just selling copper. But actually, copper, raw copper, once you have enough um, workforce, is not an unreasonable way to make your money. Of course, with Sheck, who eat a lot, it might not be all that efficient. But it's not terrible. Could be worse. All right, so I'm just buying some uh, random food to feed and then some of the research books. Will the focus be weapons or armor? Um, I'm probably going to leave that up to you all. Truth be told, I'm happy to invest however we want to invest. Where are you going, Rockfin? Keep finishing. Whoa! Graying Otter, that is a lot of bits. Holy cow. <laughs> My goodness. Thank you for all those bits. Hey, Yoda. Say thank you, too. I can barely get him to look up. Here. I will have his full attention now. Utterly delicious. <laughs> Cheers, man. You must really be a fan. And Toxic... Toxic Dart. Thank you for the sub. And a Drakenfield, thanks for the sub as well, the Prime sub. We are blessed this day, our Sheck. All right, so here is the Tier 2 Research Bench. And I'll open up the research and show you, and, and I'm going to pull. So... Here's the, the poll. Um, what research should I invest in? Weapons? Armor? Technology? Um, let's see. So there's core. Uh, core. There's core, crafting. So this is uh, crafting for first aid kits and hemp-based fabrics. Uh, I'm not going to worry about defense just yet. Electricals, I'm not going to worry about. Uh, farming, I guess, is another one we could do to start to feed ourselves. Industry. I'll just call it industry. Industry. Smithing. Or training. So, there. Five options. It is all yours. And Mr. Rockvin... Let's get some torches up in here. Actually, I don't know where the interaction point is, so I'm not going to bother with the torches just yet. But let me hand out this food. So that nobody starves. Unlike the United City slavers, I am not that. Hey, Agro! How you doing? Thank you for the resub as well. 29 months. You might be one of my oldest. I use your coffee mug all the time, by the way. Because I have a duplicate of yours. Yours and Jane's and Cheese's and Damien's. They see a lot of usage. Alright, so Operation Feed Me. Oh, Oron, you need food too. These guys are hard to feed. Long-time YouTuber lurker. Well, I appreciate you uh, paying it forward. I really do.
you know, one way or another, uh, this community would be nothing without you all, obviously. I mean, streaming to the void uh, is, is very, very tough. And I have a lot of sympathy for the people that do it, and oof, it's hard. Hey, where'd King go? Oh, he's set to engineer. Uh, let's take that off of engineering, because I don't need him to... I don't even know what he was building, to be honest. I don't know where he was going. Not a clue. I could farm now and farm later. The thing is, most of the things that you build your base up with aren't too expensive. So I could start to invest in a farm now. Uh, it's also probably worth me explaining that there's multiple different crop types. So let me do a quick crop prospect. Here, you have environment. And as you can see, it is arid 100%. And green, 10%. What this means is that this soil here can support arid crop fully, really well. And it can support green crop uh, barely. Still, it can, but barely. Um, so when you're trying to set up your... Uh, when you're trying to set up your, your farms and all that, that's one really important factor to consider is you can't grow all crop everywhere. Now... Way, way, way down in the tech tree, you do get hydroponics, which can help you be able to farm whatever you want. But until you have hydroponics, um, that's just not... You have to be very, very aware of the types of, um, of environments that you're in. And here's a little link to a Reddit post that uh, covers all of the maps of Kenshi, which can show you the... Arid, green, swamp, farm, water well, stone, copper, and iron fertility and um, density rates of Kenshi. It's a, there are a lot of maps there that I think are fantastic. And the meta, I would say, is to live at the cross sections of them. So to live on the border of two different biomes or three different biomes to gain the benefits of all of them. But the long story short is this. Uh, I'm, this is way over, like an oversimplification. Uh, swamp is swamp, right? You've got swamp for swamp. Green is where the the holy nation is. And then the rest is pretty much arid. That is a massive oversimplification. Massive. But that's the general gist. Um, there's also different seasons. And then wind availability changes depending on the, the biome that you're in as well. So there's a lot of factors at play when considering where to live. In other words... And knowing those factors is going to be important. So I am, for now, just sort of breaking even on uh, buying food and... Oh, farming trader showed up. So, uh, yeah. Let, let, me, let me just see. Because if we do want to farm, a farming trader would be a good way to get the, the crops we need to be able to farm. Um, and it looks like farming is winning, so... Let me pause that and update the current goal. Invest in farming. And sorry about the infinite pan. Kenshi's a little weird when it comes to that. So if we're trying to farm here in this biome, um, certain crops are going to be growable and some not so much. So if we're talking arid crops here, this vegetable farm as you can see, has a crop yield of 10%, because vegetables for green fruit can't be done here. And I don't have the other crops unlocked, uh, but cactus is probably going to be a bread and butter. Um, so let me buy some cat. I'm going to spend all the cats I have on cactus, if I can catch him. I should be able to, but hivers are very fast. Alright, so this cactus here will jumpstart our cactus farming hopefully and Rockvin, let's have you hand out the food oh and Fang you have spare shoes that should go to someone uh, just hand those to Trapper Keeper there we go and Trapper Keeper why do you have so much iron on you don't be weird don't hoard it Okay, so, food's getting handed out. 
and we are going to start researching farming tech. So, poetic. Hold up. No. And rain. Have food. Cool. Everybody has food. Alrighty. Sell that copper. And stop engineering. And I think we're good. So if we go to tech, let's see what we got. Go to farming. And... Oh, I'm going to need to... Uh, I'm going to need to pick up um, some of those cactuses, actually. So if you take a look at the tech here, and you go to, like, cactus farming, uh, if you mouse over them, they'll sort of... They'll sort of tell you, like, rice weed farming is common in the swamps, cactus farming, carming and dry, um, you know, hemp, wheat straw, rum brewing, so on and so forth. So, for me to research cactus farming, I need wheat straw farming first, and for me to research wheat straw farming, I need two wheat straw, and I need two cactus for cactus farming. So, um, what I need to do with Rockfin is to buy two wheat straw and put it into the research bench. Hey, Brian! What kind of game is this? Uh, it is a, well, I have an about command for you. But it is a free-roaming, squad-based RPG. Very open-ended, very sandbox, and very brutal. Like, extraordinarily brutal. Um, no exaggeration. It uh, It's one of those games where you start off as a complete zero. Everybody can kill you. Uh, and you are not special. Yeah, you are... You're just slogging away. So. It's very bleak and dark and full of atrocities. Uh, the world, I mean, you can, you, you can see the world. A world like this that looks like Mad Max feels like Mad Max. So here's like one of the towns I'm living in. And yeah, it's as if... A Richter scale 9 earthquake went off and leveled almost all of it. But that's just because everybody's poor and everything's in ruins. Kenshi has Australia summer. <laughs> yeah. And Kenshi's animals are like Australia on steroids. I would say. Uh, so for me to be able to do the wheat straw research, I'm probably going to have to go with Rockfin out to a way station. Um... I would go to the High Village, but, like, i die, and I don't want to die. So I'm going to try the Wade Station out to my east, which I might run into some Dust Bandits, but at my current uh, athletic speed of 22 miles an hour, I should be okay. Oh, uh, was there food? Because I'm also hungry. As an Australian, you agree completely. Yeah, th this game is known for having animals in it that are, um, are just, like, xenomorph-level ruthless. I think is the most appropriate way to put it. Are there cars? No, there's no vehicles. There's no way to... What the heck is going on? Uh, I don't know. It's very strange. I might need to do an import. <laughs> Reminds me of I Am Legend, but... They're Shek and human. It's a group huddle. Yeah, the man in the middle with the very pretty braided locks attracts the boys to the yard. Now, now at this angle, it's starting to look like a certain couch meme, if you know what I mean. Yeah, we're not going to look at that anymore. I... Yep. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yep. Oh, no. All right, how are we doing on our building materials? Kang has made his very first one. Congratulations, Kang. And how is the iron plates? They're looking pretty good as well. Our one miner is managing to keep up with the demands of three metal processing. And uh, yeah, end that, that pole. My bad. I leave them up forever. So the current goal here is to unlock cactus farming. 
which sounds so simple, uh, but yet so complicated. So Rockfin is heading over to the outpost. This very sketchy run. The good news is, while he's away, everybody back home is productive. They're all doing stuff. They're all working. They're all producing. So that's good. Yeah, there's no mounts. There's there's just there's just your legs. You can get prosthetic legs, scout legs that make you be able to run a little bit faster, which can really come in handy. Um, but you have to have your legs cut off first. So um, you you know, not everyone can be a uh, Paralympian. Do I have food storage in the base? I do not know. That would be a good thing to add uh, food food storage. Uh, but I'll probably not... Oh, what a... Just go the wrong way, dude? I'll probably not add food storage until I actually have cacti and cooking and stuff like that. And it's going to be a little annoying because without a proper base... Um, oh, Rook is under attack. Ooh, probably some starving. Oh, dust bandits. Proper dust bandits. Okay. So, everybody has... Everybody in this group here... Um, has permanent jobs selected. So what I'm doing is I'm... I'm, I'm going to fall back to the hub with everybody. Uh, trying to lure these dust bandits into the hub guards. There aren't too many of them, but... I don't want to be micromanaging a fight and have Rockfin running over to an out uh, way station because there's the possibility of something going fatally wrong. Magni, thanks for the sub. And Deathbed Gamer, thanks for the follow. So yeah, you, you can see these little dust bandits are running over. Now, one of the trouble here is the bounties. Um... I'm obviously never going to hand in bounties over to the Holy Nation because we're fundamentally at war with them at all times. And I'm not fa handing them over to Sheck Kingdom. It's possible to hand them over to the United Cities, but United Cities' closest bounty checkpoint is like the other side of the continent. So we're allowed to do bounty hunting, but like it's not profitable at all. Time-wise, because we there's so much running involved. I'm just making sure that uh, Rockfin's still running where he's supposed to be running. All right, I'm going to turn everybody's jobs off. Now, one of the things to note is when your jobs are off, your sort of non-industrial jobs stay on. So as you can see, Ruka, even with their jobs off, is still a medic. King is still a medic. Medic and repairing and, and um, splinting, those jobs stay permanent. Uh, let me go to the roof of the bar. Oh, no, the, the, the bar guards are coming out. So I'm not going to hide behind the guards. I just wanted to join the guards in the fight. So here we go. A fight against the dust bandits. This one here is the boss who probably has the best gear. Rain is doing a really good job 1v1 on that guy. She is landing a lot of hits. Uh. Yeah, they're getting cleaned out pretty quick. Did Rain even get... No, Rain never took a hit. Yeah, she was she was definitely beast mode on them. Whereas someone like Trapper Keeper with no armor and... Like... You know... Eight feet tall and... 50 kilos soaking wet. Gonna have a little bit of a problem uh, dealing with them. Oh, there's still one left. Is this the boss? Yeah, this is the boss. So the boss is a little bit hardest to kill. As that's how you become the boss. Just making sure Rockfin's heading in the right direction. And the boss's gear quality is going to be, on average, higher than others. Caught him up! So it's possible that we start to keep their gear. So, McDower, uh, let's get you... Yeah, high grade. Normal grade. Good horse chopper. Yeah, that boss had some stuff. Yeah, Kang doesn't really have any space for anything. Uh, Poetic, what about you? So now the, the fight is uh, basically over. And it is just the cleanup time. Grabbing 
their gear. I guess there's one, one left. Rook is having a... Oh, good hit. She's having a real hard time managing the weapon that she's holding because it's um, it's uh, massively too big for her. But that's fine. It's a good way to actually build up your strength. Uh, yep. The other thing I want to make sure I don't do is I don't want to wear these armored rag sh skirts because they physically slow you down. Uh, so they're, they're not good for me to use unless I want to be slower, which I don't want to be. Uh, the helmets are kind of fine for me to wear. They have a perception penalty, uh, but because I'm not a crossbow person, perception penalties don't matter at all. And then for uh, the people in my... Oops, I didn't mean to pick it up with her. So the people in my group that don't have armor can start wearing the heart protectors as well. As it's not great armor, but it's something. It's better than nothing. So what I'm trying to do is I'm just stripping the... Uh, the dust bandits, and it's it's also very possible that the the outpost here and the rebel base don't even have enough money to purchase all this. Um, that is quite likely. So who? Okay, you don't have chest protector. And these chest protectors cover only fifty percent of your chest. So the way that the coverage works is like, if it's a fifty percent coverage, it's a fifty fifty chance that when you get hit, it does anything. So you're going to want to try to find armor that covers more than not. So these helmets here have 90% coverage, which is good. But even at 90% coverage, um, like the lucky crossbow bolt or harpoon can sneak through it and kill you in one shot. So you shouldn't you shouldn't count on um, anything shy of 100% if you can help it. Just, yeah, you've been warned. Because I have definitely lost people from... A, uh, a crossbow bolt threading the needle through like a helmet with 90% coverage and poof, you're done. Uh, it's a sad way to lose people. Alright, Kang is the only one without armor now. There we go. And I am patching everybody up. So you'll see Kang... Oh, is Ruka don't... Yeah, Ruka doesn't have any meds on her. I'll give her some meds. Wait, no, 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 no. Don't go walking off. All right, so now Fang is also patching people up. And... Some of the, uh, some of the bandits here are alive. They're just playing dead to avoid being smushed by me. Because obviously they are outnumbered. It's a very viable strategy, to be honest. Uh, Rockfin, I'm sure, has arrived at his destination, so let me just finish up um, looting these little bandits that tried to pick a fight with me. I just want to grab their everything, right? Leave nothing on them. All your money are belong to me. Thank you for tuning in to Kenshi Shack's Conquest, which originally streamed live on Twitch October 14th. If you have any feedback for me, let me know in the comments below. If you would like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. Thank you so very much for watching, and a special thank you to all of my Twitch subscribers and Patreon patrons for supporting the channel. I'll catch you next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell. <laughs>